Is mathematics naturally occurring? Do numbers appear in nature? And if so, when did scenery study maths? Well, here to help us answer some of those questions today is mathematician Claire Postlethwaite. Hi Claire, welcome. Hi. Now, well, is, is maths um, naturally occurring or, or is that just us projecting? I think <coughs> to say that maths occurs in nature may not be really the right question. What we do see in nature are patterns. And one way to understand those patterns is to understand the mathematics behind them. So what we've got here on the table are some flowers, some pineapples, some pine cones, uh, and a picture of a seashell. And all of these things have some patterns in them which we can understand, hopefully, by looking at some mathematics. And how do, how do we understand these patterns? Is there a, is there a formula you've got? Or? Well, so the first thing we're going to do is just try and look at the patterns and see if we can see something about them, look, actually look at them physically and count things. Mm -hmm. okay? So right. first of all, we'll take the pineapple. Um, so you can see, so everyone can try this at home. Yes. Um, you can see on the pineapple, the surface is covered in these little kind of diamond shapes. Yes. Um, and if you look over the surface of the pattern and look where the diamonds are, they sort of form a spiral. They're sort of lined up in lines that form a spiral yes. around the surface of the pineapple. Okay. And so what I want to do is count the number of these spirals that go around the pineapple. So in order okay. to help, I've stuck some... Some attractive some green, green string. string and some yellow and some yellow string. <coughs> so the one I pointed out first of all is is this green string. So yeah. this green string is going down um, one spiral of these little nodules, yeah. if you like, these little diamond shapes. Okay, yep. and then I've put the next green string along the next one. Yep. So what I'm going to do is go all the way round and count how many of those. Spirals. Stripes. How many <coughs> bits of string would I need if I was going to do this over the whole oh, surface? Okay. Right. okay. I didn't do it because it would have taken a while. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So we start. This one's number one. Yep. That's two. That would be three, four, five, six, seven, seven eight. eight. And then I get back to the beginning again. All righty. Huh. Okay. So going that way, we have eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. But of course, because they're little diamonds, they also line up in another direction. Yep. Okay. So I've put the yellow string going down the spirals in the other direction, mm -hmm. okay? Now, do we expect there to be the same number or not? And, and can we know this beforehand? We don't know, so we're we going to count know. them and see. Okay. <laughs> I thought there might be some cunning mathematical form that would tell you exactly what well, you might expect to find. There might be, but we have to do some investigation first, first oh, okay. before we I'm can come the to gun, that. jumping the gun is yeah, what you're yeah. telling me. Okay. So, we're, we count that one as one, and I'm going to go around this way. Yep. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and then I'm back to where I started. Okay, so we've got so eight, going eight, around no, thirteen. That yeah. way we had thirteen. Mm -hmm. So the first one we had eight, and the other one we had thirteen. Okay, so all we need to do is just keep a member of those numbers. Yes. Okay, put the pineapple away. And then we're going to look at some other spirals on the pine cone. So you can see that the pine cone has the same sorts of things. You've got these little diamonds and they're arranged in spirals. Interesting colour, that pine cone too. Yeah, someone it? sprayed it gold. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a gold pine cone. A gold pine cone. You can do the same thing, right? You yep. can count the number of spirals going around this way and then also going around the other way. Oh, I see. Yes, yes. And yes, what yes. you find on this pine cone is rather than getting 13 and 8 like we did in the pineapple, you get 8 again, but you get 5 going the other way. Oh, okay. Okay. And on some, so I've got a bunch of pine cones. Some of these have 8 and 13, some of them have 5 and 8. We also see the same spirals on these sunflowers. Right. Now, these are kind of harder to see. If I take this one out, you can see, if you look in the centre, Oh, yes. You can see these tiny little, little spirals going on. Little diamond things arranged in spirals yep. going into the middle. Yep. And you can do the same thing. You can count how many, if I stuck a bit of string down there, yes. how many bits of string would I need to, to cover the whole thing? And again, you can do it both ways. And because the sunflower says little things that are a bit smaller, you can fit more in. And what you find on this one, this, this uh, sunflower here, is that you get 34 spirals going one way and 55 going the other. Okay. 
And the 55 actually corresponds to the number of petals on the outside of the, of the sunflower as well. We said we were looking for a pattern. Mm. So what I want to do is maybe write down all of these numbers that we've got and see if we can see a pattern. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what numbers did we have? We had 5, we That's had 8, right. we had 13. We sometimes see 21 mm -hmm. and 34, we had on the sunflower, and 55. And if you write these numbers down um, and you stare at them for a little bit, okay, you can then spot that the, each number is the sum of the preceding two numbers. We observe this pattern. Can we then use something, use some information about this pattern to explain what's going on with the sunflowers? Why do they have these numbers? Yes. Why is it so natural? Why is it so consistent in that regard? Yeah, exactly. So that's something we can come back to later, mm -hmm. I think. Um, but this sequence of numbers is known as the Fibonacci sequence, and it originated actually in the sixth century. Oh, okay. Uh, but it was Fibonacci in the 12th and 13th century that brought it to the Western world. Um, and what he was looking at was he was looking at a completely different problem. And this is one of the really interesting things, that you can look at two completely different problems and come up with the same sequence of numbers. So he was looking at a problem involving rabbits and breeding. He, <laughs> did he raise rabbits? Why did he use rabbits and breeding? Um, was it just a, just a way of um, illustrating a sequence of numbers. So I guess somebody asked him to look at models for population. So he wanted to write in a really simple way of understanding how populations grow. Mm -hmm. Okay, because there's obviously there's an awful lot of factors involved in, you know, if you if you think about say a population of rabbits in a field, how do they how do they grow? Is it does the population increase? Does the population decrease? And he was just one of the first people to try and study this sort of thing, population modeling in a sort of mathematical sense. Okay. Um, so the model he came up with was looking at pairs of rabbits. So you have, you have make a lot of kind of dumb assumptions when you do this model. Um, so you assume that rabbits come in pairs, breeding pairs. Yep. Okay, so you have one male and one female rabbit. Yeah. Um, and every month or every unit of time, say, month, call it a month, every month, that, that breeding pair has a pair of rabbits, rabbit babies. Okay, mm -hmm. and it takes a further month for that pair of rabbit babies to mature so that they can have their own rabbit babies. Okay, so we've made a lot of ridiculous assumptions, assumptions which yeah. aren't true, <coughs> but that's what mathematicians do all the time. Um, and but as long as you understand the assumptions, then you can understand the limitations of your right. model. Right. Yes, you can um, work around the margins of error. Or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <coughs> um, so you have, you know, and, and the other assumption is that the rabbits never die. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Rabbits never die. Okay. So this will be a possibly useful model on the short term. Okay. If you're just yeah. looking over a short period of time, then this this might be true. Obviously, yeah. over longer, longer periods of time, time, it's a sort of a horror film, really, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So you start with one pair of rabbits. Yeah. Okay. After a month, they have another pair of rabbits. Okay. Yeah. So there's baby. So there's now two pairs of rabbits. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then after at the end of the next month, the first pair of rabbits have another baby, have another pair of babies, mm. but their first set of babies hasn't, hasn't yet matured. Okay, so they don't yet have. It takes a month for them to get online. It takes a month for them to get online, if yeah. you like. Okay, <coughs> so at the end of that month, we now have three pairs of babies. Okay, there's yeah. the, the original ones, yes. their first set of babies after the first month, and their second set of babies after the second month. Yeah. Okay, so now we have three sets of babies. Next okay, month. the next month, the original set can have another pair, yep. and also their first set of babies are ready to rock. Are ready to go, so they have another one. So you get two new pairs. Yep. Plus okay. Added to the three that we already have. Yep. It's going to give us five. So that's two and three equals five. Two plus three equals five. Which is the last two in the sequence combined. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And so the next time. Yeah. Right, now we need to kind of write things down to keep track of it. Yeah. But yeah. it turns out that there are three lots of babies, three pairs of rabbits which can have new babies now. So it's basically all apart from the two that were just born. Mm. Right? So you've got three more pairs of babies to have new babies. So you get three new pairs of babies. Add that to the five that we had. Yes. And that's going to give us eight. Right. 
and so on. And so on. And so each month, the total number of pairs of rabbits is the, the sum of, sum of the, last the number that you had yeah. that month, the month before and yeah. the month before that. And so, and so that, that was, as you say, probably, I guess, the prototype for, for some population modelling in, in, the, in the natural world. Yeah. But the Fibonacci numbers are more than that, aren't they? Right, them, there's so much more, yes. Yeah, so you, you see, as I said, we see the numbers in the flowers. Yes. Um, we see the numbers in this population, this very simple population model. Mm. Um, and the other the way it comes into is not so much nature, but art. Ah, okay. So what we're going to do now, uh, rather than looking at the numbers themselves, is as we, we can see that these numbers are getting bigger and bigger, mm. right? They're always getting bigger because we're just taking two numbers and we're adding them together and we get the next number and then we add it. So they're obviously getting bigger and bigger mm. and bigger. Mm. Um, one thing that mathematicians like to do when you see a sequence of numbers is think about how does the ratio of successive terms, that's terms that are next to each other in this sequence, change as we go further up? Okay, so, so remember our sequence starts with uh, 1 and then 1 and then 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. So if I were to look at the ratio, I start by doing the ratio of the second number divided by the first number. So that's 1 divided by 1, and I get 1. Okay, then I do the third number divided by the second number, which is 2 divided by 1, yep. and I get 2. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> then I'm going to do the fourth number, which is 3 divided by 2. Yeah. So 3 divided by 2 is 1 and a half. Yep. Okay? And then what have I got? So the next one is 5 divided by 3. Yes. So 5 divided by 3, three. is 1 and 2 thirds, which is about 1.7. So, yeah, 1.67. 1. 1. 7. 7. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay? Yeah. So we started, we had 2, 2, 1.5, 1.7. Okay? Yeah. Then the next one is 1. 1.8. Sorry, the next one is 8 divided by 5. Yes, which is uh, about 1.6. 1.6. Exactly, yep. 1.6 exactly, okay? And then we're going to do 13 divided by 8, which yep. is harder to do in your head, yes. but it comes out at about 1.6 and a bit. Yeah, yeah, 6 and a bit, yeah, and, that's what and I was so thinking. <laughs> <laughs> and you keep doing this, and what you see is they get, they, they started by changing quite a bit, right? Yes. We went from 2, two to 1.5 to 1.7, back yeah. to 1.6. The numbers get closer together, end up getting closer and closer to a number which looks like about 1.618 and okay. then lots and lots of decimal places. Yes. But we can't, you know, when you just do that, you can't, you can't actually do it forever. So sort of from just doing that, um, just doing that division, you're not going to get the final number. Right. Okay, because it's always just going to be little, minuscule, micro... Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's pretty, as far as we're concerned, it's, it, it, it levels out. It levels out, yes. As and in fact, you can, could tell. you can, mm. just by looking at that sequence, so rather than thinking about the numbers, but thinking about the rule. Okay, so we had a rule to generate those numbers, which yes. was add together the two numbers to get the next one. Mm. We can do a little bit of playing around with that rule, and you can uh, compute exactly what that number is. And it's something like 1 plus the square root of 5 divided by 2. Right. OK. So but the point of that is that we get, a, we get one number. And this number, I, I'm guessing, is this, is this what they call the, the golden ratio? Yes, exactly. This is the golden ratio. And this is what is used in architecture? Is it, or, or architecture and art. It's just So if you have a rectangle which is 1 metre deep and yeah. 1.618 meters long, yeah. it's a very pretty rectangle. The one, one thing you do also see it in is um, these spirals. So, I mean, we had the spirals, we had the spirals on the flowers, but you get spirals in seashells as well. Um, and if you, if you look at the, the sort of, the rate at which the spiral is coming out, that's related to the golden ratio as well. You can create spirals that look like this by drawing squares of successive sizes of the Fibonacci so we can try. So for example, what I want to draw is a sequence of squares of which the side is equal to the Fibonacci numbers. Okay? So we start by drawing a square with side length 1. Okay? So that's of 1. Mm -hmm. And then I draw another one next to it with side length 1. Okay? Now because these two add together to give me the next Fibonacci number, which is 2, then I can draw a square here, which is a side length 2. Right. Okay. Yep. And then I'm going to draw another square next to it with side length 3, which is the next Fibonacci number. And then 3 plus 2 is 5. So this square here will have side length 5. 
Yep. And then this one here will have side length eight, right? Because it's five plus three, five plus which three. is eight. This one will be 8 plus 5, so which is 13. 16. Okay, now I'm going to stop because otherwise the picture is going to get messy. But yep. if what I want to do now is draw on a spiral, which goes in through these um, through these squares. Okay, so the spiral is going to come. Uh, it's going to be like <coughs> a quarter circle through each of the squares. So we have one like that, that. And that, okay. and, and and then that spiral has the same kind of <coughs> curviness as the spiral you get yes. in the in the seashells and on snails and stuff. Is it just sort of the, the efficiency of evolution that created this? Is there any has anyone thought about why this has happened? In There's nature? no really well established reason, but I think I have some theories of my own in terms of the plants. Yes. So this number, this golden ratio, is it's not what we call a rational number. It's not like the ratio of two numbers. It's the sort of the limit of the ratio of two numbers as you get bigger yes. and bigger and bigger. Yes. So imagine, so when the, when the flowers do their spiraling in the center of the flower head, yep. that's a similar process to what they're doing when they're sticking out their leaves, okay? So imagine that before you've got your flower, you're, you're a plant, right, and you're growing leaves. Yes. Okay. Now, so you, you're Catching growing. Sun. You're growing up. Mm. You want to go up. exactly. You want to catch the sun. Mm. Okay. So you stick out your first leaf at some position. Yeah. Okay. Now suppose so then and then your stalk grows up a bit and you want to stick out your next leaf. Now where do you want you to stick out your next leaf? Best possible spot to get more sun. To get more isn't sun, it? right? Mm. So you might think, well, what if I do it directly opposite? Yeah. Okay. Then somewhere in the plant brain, as it were, there's this thing saying stick out leaves directly opposite. Okay. Then when you come around to the third one. If it was directly opposite, it's going to be directly above the first one. Yeah. Okay, so then That's the first one's not going to get any sun, so it's going to be completely useless. Right. Okay, so suppose you stuck it out a quarter of the way around. Okay. Split the difference. Okay, yeah. so then the third one would come out half, the fourth one would come out yeah. there, but then the fifth one's going to be directly above the first one again. So you've got to... Okay, so you need some angle where they're never going to overlap, basically, and... Um, the Fibonacci, the, sorry, the golden ratio yes. um, is what we call an irrational number, which is one of the sorts of numbers where if you, if you were to keep laying leaves at that angle, or an angle which is somehow related to the golden ratio as you go round, they're never going to exactly overlap. However many leaves you stick out, they'll never overlap. Right. So it's in some sense, it's a sort of efficient way of packing your leaves together. Yes. So, so, so from that point of view, it, it has a real evolutionary logic to it. Yeah, it makes sense. The the plant which stuck out mm. its leaves at the right angle was the one was that the one that did best, did and best. so yeah. and so that angle was sustained through evolution. Okay, yeah. so there's a real reason for that. As for the as for the pineapples, we can't be. It's not quite so clear. Well, is it? it's similar, right? Because the pineapples have have those. Um, oh yes, the little the things that they cut off in the supermarkets here. Yeah, the, the yeah. <laughs> they're really cool, which make it look like a real pineapple when you have them. Right? You know? Yeah. I, I mean, know. that looks like a bit denuded, de doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like it's been fixed or something. It's a bit wrong. Um, and so those things, I presume, collect sun or something. So. Yes, for the, for the same reasons. <laughs> so the other thing, I guess, about Fibonacci. So it, it, in terms of having practical applications, um, they've used it. It's used in architecture or in, yeah. in, in building things in general. Any other uses it, it's, it's had? Um, did you ever play the game She Loves Me, She Loves Me Not when you were a kid? What, what do you mean? I'm still playing it. <laughs> <laughs> so we can call this a practical application if you like. Yes, oh, um, it absolutely. It was crucial. <laughs> so, so remember the game, okay? You, yes. you have a daisy. Yes. And you pull off the, the petals. Which we, can we do one? Let's have a quick look at one. Yeah, we can do. Let me denude. One of these, I don't know. Here we go. Yep. It might be wrong. The gerbera. Counted the petals and everything. Okay. okay. So. So. Now. You're going to pull off the petals one at a time. One at a time. She loves me. Okay. And then, of course, she loves me not. And on we would go. And on you would go. Yes. So whether you end up with she loves me or she loves me not. Yes. It's going to depend whether mm. the flower has an odd number or an even number of petals. 
Right. Right? Because if you yes. have an, you start on petal, Always, num yeah, petal number one mm -hmm. with She Loves Me. Yes. And if you end on petal number... Even. Even, you get She it Loves Me not. not. And if you end on a petal number that's odd, you get She Loves me. me. So you want the odd numbered... Odd numbered petals, petals give you She Loves gives Me. Gives you the right? answer you want. That, that's assuming that you want her to love you, of course. <clears throat> you probably wouldn't play you the probably game. Wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah, probably wouldn't. Yeah, a bit of a strange... <laughs> yeah, well, it takes all sorts. Anyway. So what we want to know is whether the petal has an odd number of... So, sorry. We want to know whether the flower has an odd number of petals or an even number of petals. Yes, we do. And from our discussion earlier, we decided that lots of flowers have Fibonacci numbers of petals. Yes. So we can look at the Fibonacci numbers and say, well, is a Fibonacci number more likely to be odd or even? I would, I would say off the top of my head, odd. <laughs> you would? Yeah, I got it wrong, did I? <laughs> no, you're exactly right. Oh, OK, right. It Just... turns out that two out of three Fibonacci numbers are odd. Yes. And only one out of three are even. Yes. And we can, we can understand that by thinking about how they're formed by adding them together. Yes. Okay? So imagine <coughs> in the sequence you have two odd numbers next yep. to each other. If you add together two odd five numbers, three. five and three, you get an even number, yeah. eight. Okay? Then you've got to add that even number to the odd number which came before it. Yes. Even and odd makes odd. odd. Okay, then you've got the same thing, you've got that odd number with the even number that came before it. Yeah. Add them together, you get another odd number, then you're back to two, two odd numbers again. So you so always go odd, odd, even, odd, odd, even. So you've got two thirds chance, more or less, of, of getting your odd. Yep. With a Fibonacci. Which gives you a two thirds chance of she yeah. loves me. She loves me. So any, any, any flower you pick up, you've got a two thirds chance at coming out right. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, which means if you get an even number, you're definitely doomed. All right, well, that. Um, that makes me feel a lot safer now. I will continue to play that game. I'll never look at flowers and purples ever <laughs> the same again. Thanks very much for talking to us today. No Chair. problem.